Good morning, modern setters. It's bright and early on chicken harvesting day. I like to get the chicken skull to fill up with water first thing in the morning and get everything up to temperature so we're not waiting for it when we're ready to start harvesting. I have installed an outdoor hot water faucet, which makes it really nice for doing projects like this. We need hot water outside, so our skull that won't take as long to heat up. If we didn't have the hot water faucet, it would take a little bit longer for all of our water to warm up because we're on well water. The water comes out of the faucet at 50 degrees. We're using a 110 volt electric scalder from coopsandmore.com. The nice thing is that we can set it to the water temperature we want and we don't have to worry about it. So if I go set, we're at 145 and that's the temperature we want to be at when we're scalding. So this will automatically turn on and off when it needs to. I got a little bit of water in our catch pan so that way when we're bleeding out our chickens, the blood's gonna go right into here and it's not gonna coagulate and stick right to the plastic. It'll make it easier for putting in our compost pile. All right, so while that finishes warming up, we can go get the chickens ready and get them in our transport cages. Grab our transport cages. a good size. I ended up eating all four of our transport pages. these guys nice and close to our work area and we'll make sure we can leave them in the shade. Okay. 
should be in good shape. The scald is already up to temperature, so we don't have to worry about our water heating up. And then the chickens are in their transport cages right near our workstation. You already did all that? I did. Getting it prepped and ready. Good morning, Willow. Good morning, girls. Oh, good morning. Little pea, blossom, magnolia. You girls ready to eat? There you go, Hope. You're gonna have your own side to yourself. here and eat at the feeder with the other girls. Go play with the other goats. Have fun. Now it's your turn. So all the chickens that had flown out, I caught yesterday and I clipped their wings. So, so far, they're all staying inside their poultry netting. I like seeing that. Good morning, boys. You guys want to come out on pasture? Take that as a yes. You ready? I gotta go in. The gate's gotta go in. There you go. You boys are doing a good job. Go ahead. Go eat. They've been loving all these apple suckers. Eating those down nicely. You done, Missy? We fill this big old cooler with cold water, ice, and apple cider vinegar. First of all, we gotta make sure we got the plug plugged because that would not be good. We're on well water, so our water comes out 50 degrees to start, and then we'll load it with ice, and it'll cool off pretty quickly. To get water to our outdoor kitchen, I just hook our hose up here, and I have the fittings in there all, so we can just do hose adapters. That's another reason why we have our hot water faucet out here is that way we can have warm water out at our sink. We like to start saving ice from our freezer a little while before so that way we have a good amount of it on hand. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and bring Kudo here dropped off to get groomed and then I'll be back. Okay. So, I know you're gonna start without me. You know. But I'll be back. All right. Okay. Then Pluto will be a new puppy when you bring her back. Yeah. I like having a bucket of warm soapy water around so that way I can keep washing my hands while we're doing this whole process. Our scalder is at 145. The chickens are over here in the shade. We've got all of our cones set up. Some of these birds are really large and some of them are a little smaller. Um, there is a weak difference in the age of some of them. So I set them in the cone upside down 
and I make sure their head is out and I pull their head through and I keep my hand on it and then I'm gonna make a slice. I can't show this part on YouTube, but I'm gonna make a slice here and here and they're gonna bleed out. They're gonna bleed out really fast. We're gonna catch their blood right here and then once this part is done, I'll be right back. I like to bleed out two chickens at a time so that way while the first while I'm dunking the first one, the second one's bleeding out. So then I come over here, go in my scalder. Dunk the chicken in. Up and down, back and forth. We want to make sure we get it good, a good even dunk. One way to check it is to pull the back feathers. When they start coming out easy, it is ready. All right. These rear feathers are pulling out nice and easy. That means it's ready for the plucker. Turn it on. Get your water supply. I won't fast forward that one, and that'll be the real time that it took to get the chicken clean. Look at that. One feather on the tail, a couple on the wings, three right there, one right there, three here. The skin is off all of the legs. That is a perfectly cleaned bird. All right, here's another perfectly scalded bird. Again, the legs are nice and clean. We have a couple of feathers on the tail. That wing is perfectly clean and this wing has got one. Look at that, so nice. So at this point, we'll cut the legs off. I'll pick the bird up, I'll let the weight of the bird hang it by its leg. And then I can see its joint. Put my knife right in the joint and it falls, pretty much falls right off at that point. Then I'll come to the front of the bird, I'll make a slit right here where the neck meets the breast meat. And I go in here and I pull the skin. And then you have your, you have two main veins right here. You just want to go and you want to loosen them up. You have two bones right here, right above your vent. Come here, make a small slice. Make it big enough so you can get your hand in there. If you have to, you can tear it. Start with two fingers if you have a big hand. And you, I go up right here by the rib cage, and I just take my fingers, and I just start working them this way. You're starting to separate the innards. I'm just kind of ripping and tearing. It doesn't sound very nice, but it's the best way to do it to get everything out. I just start taking my fingers, and in here, I just start pulling them down. Stop pulling down to free everything up. Once you get everything free, you can wrap your fingers and give it a good old pull. And if you loosened up the esophagus and everything, that should all that'll come out right there. Boom. Cut that off. I just throw everything right into a five-gallon bucket, and then we compost all that afterwards. Then I'll spin it back around. Cut my neck off. We're gonna save our neck for bone broths. If you don't want your neck, you can put it in your compost bucket or feed it to your dogs. Set that aside. 
side, we'll do the other one. Then we come over here to our sink. And we rinse everything out. Now it pretty much looks like a store-bought bird right at this point. The next step, I like to take my knife, slice the skin right here, then I take my legs and I tuck my legs in here, so that way when we go to put them in the bag, the legs aren't like this. And if you do it now before you put it in the ice bath, it's easier. If you do it after you get in the ice bath, rigor mortis is set in and they are stiff, so it's not as easy to tuck your legs in. Two are done. So now we'll take them over here and put them in our ice bath. We just finished up processing 38 meat birds. It is 11.15. I'm gonna pick up some of our stuff while these birds chill. Then we'll get them in their freezer bags and all sealed up. We'll weigh them and we'll find out how big of a harvest we got. We're gonna rinse our birds off one more time. We'll let them air dry for a little while then we're gonna get them bagged up. Now we're gonna start bagging our birds into our shrink wrap bags. They have different sizes. This is for small chickens. Then we get the average size chicken bag out here. So we have quite a few smaller ones. These ones were seven weeks old and most likely hens. The batch of chicks we got this year, half of them were dead when we got them from the mail. So the hatchery sent us out another batch, but they came a week later. So that's why we have some small ones and some really big ones. We like to take our straw, put our straw in, inside the carcass of the chicken, give it a little twist, then we put our zip tie on. Then we have our hot water, I dunk the bag in. Look at that, it's like a store-bought chicken. Look at that, so beautiful. Bam. Three and a quarter pounds, nice. That's one of the smaller ones. Like a hole. 3.41. Is that a four and a half? What is it? 4.42. 4 4.42. 4 this is our last one. This is our biggest one. I'm going to say this is pushing six pounds. No way. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Do, 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 do. 
five, <laughs> seven, six. Ha <laughs> ha, we almost had a six pounder. Next time our goal is gonna be some six pounders on our next batch. Well, what this you... was right. that We had some younger because we had ended up having a new batch. Right, so. I was afraid to go another week because I saw this guy and there was a couple of ones that were close to this and I was like, if we go another week, he's probably not gonna survive. He's gonna have a heart attack. That would have been a shame. It would have been to lose a bird that size. I couldn't show me dumping everything in it, but right here I got a compost pile and I put all the feathers, the innards, the heads, and everything we didn't use from the chickens in here in the center. It's loaded with goat bedding, with wood shavings, manure, hay. So we're gonna put some more bedding on top of it. And then I have a bunch of coffee grinds that we get from a local cafe. I'm gonna be putting those in here too and that'll help hide all the smell. Right now, all I smell is the pine shavings. I don't smell any of the chicken stuff, which is good. Now we gotta grab these crates and go get our meat bird chicks and get them out on pasture. They're gonna love it. meet you down by where the meat bird chicks are. So we started with 41 meat bird chicks in this batch. Pretty sure we have 39. I probably won't remember to count while I'm collecting them right now, but we gotta get them out on pasture. And then in two weeks, we have another batch of 40 meat birds coming. So we're gonna be eating good this winter. started out with 41, we've lost two. So I'm happy with that.
It feels good having this batch of meat birds out on pasture. It's just amazing how much they love to eat that clover and forage. And then the turkeys, they were kind of sad when their chicken buddies left. So they are excited to have some new chickens back with them. They'll get to know each other in the next day or two and they'll be buddies mingling with each other all the time. So we ended up harvesting 38 meat birds. The average weight was just over three pounds. I get the exact average. But we ended up harvesting 144 pounds of whole chickens and then over nine pounds of feet and necks. We'll be using that for bone broth. So over, all in all, we've got 153 pounds of meat in the freezer from the last batch of meat birds. The reason why the average weight was so small, half of our birds were a week younger than the bigger birds. But I was afraid if we waited another week, the bigger birds would have ended up dying. Some of them would have had heart attacks. I didn't want to end up having to harvest two weeks back to back. Because harvesting is one of those things. It's a job that has to get done on the homestead if you want to raise your own delicious meat. But it's not something we enjoy. So we like to stagger it. These guys, we got about five more weeks out here in pasture. And then we'll be harvesting them. And then we'll be doing the turkeys with them at the same time. And then we'll be having two more batches of meat birds. And we're going to have like a month in between harvesting all of them. So we're not spending a lot of time doing the same chore because it's not enjoyable. So all in all, we are excited with 153 pounds of meat in the freezer right now. I'm hoping that the average weight of these will be five pounds. Fingers crossed, we're gonna find out. They're all looking really healthy. Some of them are a little bit bigger than the others, but they're all the same age. So we're gonna be in good shape on this batch. They'd much rather have bugs and grass right now. It amazes me that we were able to grow 144 pounds of meat in 56 days. It only takes 56 days to raise those meat birds from when we get them here to the day of harvesting. The meat birds we just put on a pasture only have five more weeks before we be harvesting them. It's just crazy how fast they grow. If you want to see the video of when we put the meat birds that we just harvested out on pasture, I'll put a link to that video right here. And believe it or not, it was not that long ago. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey with us. You are a huge blessing to us in our homestead. And we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres. Bye.